Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. Uh, I finally got me another camera. I don't know whether I like it as much. Well, it just flipped my picture around the other way. I guess I don't. I don't. All right. Well, whatever. All right. Well, I hope you had a wonderful day. Sorry. Sorry for the little meltdown over the camera. I'm going to work on that tomorrow. Anyway, uh, had a wonderful Monday today. Went kind of quickly, but it was a good Monday. I hope your Monday was good. Uh, tonight, we are going to be doing Psalm 9. And I'm sorry I wasn't here on Saturday. We were birthday celebrating for our son, who turned 18. And uh, yesterday, I was just wiped out. We did two parties. We went and did a bowling party with my daughter and her family because I figured that they would, you know, have more fun bowling. So we did that, and that was fun, and we played games, and we had cupcakes, and got a private party room at Granbury. It was really nice. It was all around. I highly recommend that. And then we did like a dinner at Los Primos that night. So that was good too. But I was kind of partied out on Sunday and then we went and played games with the youth on Sunday. So I was really tired yesterday afternoon and I didn't do much of anything. But I'm back tonight. And we're going to talk about Psalm 9. And I don't know if I have it marked or not. Oh. No. No. Mark, Mark, marked Mark, because we, we read Mark, and I marked Mark, but I didn't put my marker back where it went in Psalms. I can do that in a jiffy, I think. None. I'll leave that in Mark. Okay, so Psalm 9, we will read that in a little bit. Prayer first. There's lots of things to pray about. I'm a bit concerned about things in Afghanistan, um, but we'll pray about that. I'm praying for miraculous things to happen out of Afghanistan. For many, many to the saving grace of Jesus Christ through this crisis, and it is a crisis. Right. I don't know why I have that shadow on my camera yet. Okay, that's it. That was my phone making that shadow. Okay, all right. Well, let's go ahead and pray. God, we just come to you and we thank you, God, that you are on your throne and you are in control as every day, every day, even from the beginning. God, you have always been in control, and you will always be in control. God, we just praise you and thank you. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I am. And you are the God of miracles. Thank you for being our creator. Thank you for being our protector, our provider, our sustainer. Uh, thank you for being our shelter in the storm and for being our strength and refuge and so much more, our Redeemer, our Healer. God, you are all those things. You are all these things. God, you are powerful and mighty and magnificent. And you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. <clears throat> you are loving and kind and compassionate and caring and faithful and trustworthy. And uh, you are patient, God. You want none to perish. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we pray for all the medical workers right now that are facing this disease day after day, day in and day out. God, please protect them and give them strength. 
pray for our law enforcement officers, God, that just, they face unimaginable things on, every day, God. So please just protect them and give them strength also. We pray for our military, God. We pray that you would be with them, that you would give them a peace, God. That you would give them strength, that you would give them courage, God. We pray, God, that um, we pray for the lost. We just pray, God, that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God. We just pray for them to repent and to return to you and to let you reconcile the relationship that they once had with you. God, we pray for these hurricane victims in Louisiana and Alabama and all the other states that were affected, God. We just pray that you would be with them and that you would meet their needs, God, that you would send people that could be the hands and feet of Jesus to tend to them, that would have the love and compassion of Jesus and would shine the light of Jesus, that would come to meet their needs. We pray for the people in Afghanistan that are left, God. I saw an image today that I did not like that you will not see on the news. But it's, it's reality, God. You know so much more than what we know, God, because you see everything. Nothing is hidden from you. God, we just pray for all these people that are left, that feel like America turned their back on them. We just pray for safety for them. We pray for miraculous things to happen, God, like the red sea splitting so that the Israelites could walk on dry ground. We pray for miraculous things, God, that no one can deny was your hand, your mighty hand, God. We pray for uh, safety. We pray for these people to be surrounded by your angels, God. We pray for there to be a way out for them. We pray for our retired military that have stepped in, God, and our nonprofit organizations that have stepped in to help these people. God, when the leaders in our military and the leaders in our administration turn their back on these people, real patriots stepped up and went over there, and they're putting their life on the line. Again, they already put their life on the line when they were there before. But again, they're putting their life on their line because they made promises to the Afghan people. They made promises to people that helped them and kept them safe, God. And they will keep their promises. And God, just please help them. Give them discernment. Help them to stay safe. Protect them with your angels, God. As they go and, and, and escort people to an escape route. I pray that miraculous things would open up, God. Just things that these special people that were willing to go back, that they know about that area. God, we just pray. We pray for a people in Afghanistan to rise up for the truth, God. For them to have faith over fear, God. For somehow, some way, God, for people's hearts to be changed. For people's hearts to be turned towards you, God. For them to see your mighty hand in their country, trying to help them. Maybe through hands and feet of Jesus. Maybe through loving compassion of Jesus. But God, just let them know that it's you. That you are with them and that they are not alone. Even though this administration and the leaders and our State Department and our Department of Defense did not do a good job of vacating it is not, this does not fall on our military that are brave men and women and should be commended 
for laying their life down, for putting their life on the line in Afghanistan for many years. God, please give them peace. Give them peace that their mission is completed. I hear that many are resigning, God, and I really don't blame them. I don't, I don't recognize this country. I don't recognize this country that does not put our people and our military first. I don't recognize it. But God, more than that, there are other disasters going on simultaneously. We pray that you would be with these people also, God. That they would reach out to you in their time of need, God, and that they would find people there to rescue them. People there to meet their needs. I pray for all the people that have lost loved ones, God, especially the families of the 13 brave soldiers that lost their lives, God. And I pray for peace, comfort, and strength for these families. And I pray, God, for you to give them a, a peace and to know that their loved one gave it all for their country. And God, I pray for all the Afghanistans that have lost the Afghan people that have lost their lives. I pray for their families, for peace, comfort, and strength. And the image that I saw, God, I don't think I'll ever be able to get out of my head. The level of cruelty that this group of people will go to, I don't think our country has any idea. But there will be repercussions for not doing the right thing, for not standing for the right thing, for not standing in protection of people that protected us. There will be repercussions. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, my Pray and Share Warriors. I wasn't planning on praying about that, but I saw an image this afternoon that just really made me sick to my stomach. I kind of wish I hadn't seen it, but once you see things, you can't unsee them. So it was a helicopter, our helicopter that we left, our helicopter that we left, and the Taliban, or Taliban, whatever, I don't know, these evil, maniacal people were hanging people off of the, the helicopter and flying around and just hanging them by rope because that's the level of evil that we turn that country back over to. That is the level of evil. They're not new and improved and they haven't found Jesus. Their plan is the same as it's always been. And our, country, our, our leaders know, our leaders know how evil they are. But you know what? God is the righteous judge. And God will judge all unrighteousness. And God cannot be, he can't be bought. He can't be compromised. And he can't be threatened. So today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to ask Jesus into your heart and make your life right. Because we don't know how much longer God is going to put up with humanity and the cruelty that they do. All right, well, let's read Psalm 9. And I'm sorry. I just felt led to share that. So Psalm 9 is prayer and thanksgiving for the Lord's righteous judgments. There's going to be righteous judgment. So it's time to 
it is time for people to realize that this world is not going to last forever. It's not. To the chief musician, the tune of Death of the Sun. I don't know what that's talking about. A Psalm of David. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turn back, they shall fall and perish at your presence. For you have maintained my right and my cause. You sat on the throne judging in righteousness. You have rebuked the nations. You have destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. And this is exactly what is going to happen to the enemies of God. Exactly. He is going to blot their name out forever and ever. And you know what? He's not going to take any joy in it either. Because he created them for something a whole lot better than what they turned out to be. O oh, enemy, destructions are finished forever, and you have destroyed cities. Even their memory has perished, but the Lord shall endure forever. Jesus is going to endure forever. Jesus has already overcome. He's already overcome the evil. He's already overcome the evil. He has prepared his throne for judgment. He shall judge the world in righteousness, and he shall administer judgment for the people, for the peoples in uprightness. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. That is my prayer for these people that are stuck over there. Many Americans that have passports that could not get on planes. Why? I don't know. Nonprofits went over there to help them. They're still over there. The nonprofits and the retired military are still over there because they don't see the deadline as August 31st. They see the deadline as we don't leave anyone behind. And I, I praise God for them. I do. Otherwise, our military left this afternoon or last night or whatever. It's a different time. A refuge in times of trouble, and those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare his deeds among the people. When he avenges blood, he remembers them. He does not forget the cry of the humble. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Consider my trouble from those who hate me. You who lift me up from the gates of death, that I may tell all I may tell of all your praise. In the gates of the daughter of Zion, I will rejoice in your salvation. The nations have sunk down in the pit which they made. In the net which they hid, their own foot is caught. The Lord is known by the judgment he executes. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. It says meditation. And then it says Selah. I think that's the end of that one. Oh no, it's not. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. This, this is judgment. This will be God's judgment. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, do not let man prevail. Let the nations be judged in your sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. That's right. We have no gods in any of our nations. God is the only God. He is the one true God that created everyone, created everyone to do great things, 
to glorify his name. But many chose not to do great things, and many chose have chosen to do things for themselves. And in doing things for themselves have hurt many innocent people, just like these people in Afghanistan. That our prayer, Jesus is their only hope. The Holy Spirit guiding them out is their only hope. I'm already hearing miraculous stories about people that were running in one direction and they felt like the Holy Spirit wanted them to run in the other direction and it saved their life. So the Holy Spirit is moving over there. And I want to tell you something else that I've started praying for and you may go, well, that's just crazy because they're evil. I've started praying for the Taliban. For God to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. And you may go, well, they're too far gone. Well, what about what about Apostle Paul? He was too far gone too. Anybody can receive salvation. Anyone. Jesus died for everyone in the world. That includes the people that are evil. Only God knows hearts and minds and knows whether they are able to be saved or not. We don't. That is why we pray for salvation for everyone. God doesn't want anyone to perish. We should not want people to perish either. There is forgiveness for all sin. People ask me, well, you know, that's a little sin and that's a big sin. Well, in God's eyes, sin is sin. But Jesus will forgive all sin. What seems like a big sin to us is just as important to God as a small sin is to us. So that was Psalms 10. Let me see if there's any study part to this. Okay. Okay, it says, The psalm of thankful praise celebrates the Lord's righteous judgments. Psalms 9 and 10, closely related in form and language, appear as a single psalm in the Septuagint, the Septuagint, a Greek translation of the Hebrews Old Test, the Hebrew Old Testament. Both psalms express confidence in God's victory over evil. To know refers to personal, intimate knowledge. Therefore, those who possess such knowledge and put their trust in the Lord experience His protection during troubled times, prompting the psalmist to encourage his listeners to sing praises to the Lord. Okay, we kind of end it there. Okay, so that's what my study part was about, Psalms 9, but to me what it says is judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. And it's going to be swift. It's going to be very fast. For our country and for all the other countries that have decided to follow other gods, it's going to be fast. And it's going to come. We think that we see a lot of things going on right now, and there are a lot of things going on right now. But it's going to be so much worse. Things are not going to, we're not going to have this miraculous turnaround. Things are getting bad and they're just getting worse all the time. So let's read. I just kind of want to read Revelation. Kind of feeling like reading Revelation. And I think I'm going to read the about the seals. I think I'm going to read Revelation 6. I feel led to read that because that's going to show, that's going to show. 
God's judgment to come. But I want you to notice something. That even when God is pouring out His wrath, He is telling people to repent and come to Him. And even when Jesus is talking to the churches, He is telling people to repent and come to Him. But there's going to be a time where the wrath is going to be bigger than the call to come. So now is the time of salvation. I'm very serious about salvation today. The first seal, the conqueror. I think... I think we're at the red horse. I think the seal of the Antichrist has already been opened. That's just my opinion. I believe we're to the second seal. I think we're to war. I think war is gonna is fixing to overtake us like we've never seen before in all corners of the world and in our country. I believe we're going to experience war. <clears throat> One reason is because we didn't maintain a faction of what would of the people that want jihad on us. So okay. Well, let's read this. The first seal, the conqueror. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the living, of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. Okay, that is the Antichrist. That is who he's talking about. This isn't Jesus when Jesus comes back to defeat evil. This is the seal that I believe starts the tribulation. I believe these seals are what are going to go into the tribulation. So let's see what my study Bible says about this. The seven trumpets, Revelation 8, 9. The seven thunders, Revelation 10, 2 through 4. And the seven bowls, Re Revelation 16, are the four series of judgments in multiples of seven. These events are part of the tragic period called the Great Tribulation during which judgment is poured out on a world that has rejected the Lord. This period is characterized by the wrath and judgment of God, the awakening of Israel's longing for the Messiah, and preparation for Christ's return. Four horses whose colors are symbolic of the events they initiate are sent to the earth, the white horse represents conquest. See man of sin. 1 Thessalonians 2, 3, and 4. Note Revelation 13. The prophecy of 70 weeks. Um, and then the second rider sits upon a red horse. Symbolizing bloodshed and war. And is given a great sword. The rider of the black horse carries a pair of scales which were used to measure grain. Each person consumed an average of one quart of this main dietary staple daily. Barley was cheaper than wheat and was considered... I lost my spot. And was considered the food of the poor. All a man's daily earnings, a denarius, would be needed to buy food. 
Though food would be scarce, other staples of an ordinary diet, such as oil and wine, would not. Thus, the black horse represents a condition of severity, severe scarcity, but not of worldwide starvation. The fourth horse, pale in color, represents death, which will strike more than a quarter of the earth's population through war, famine, pestilence, and wild beasts. Okay. Well, I'm going to go back and start on the second seal. I didn't mean to read that far down. My hair. One of my cameras has flipped backwards. So, my hair is doing weird stuff. And it's like... Oh. I flipped it around. Okay. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come and see. Another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. So maybe the Antichrist has not been released yet after I read this study part. But we're very close. We're very close, and the Antichrist is already on the scene somewhere. He just hasn't been revealed yet. And the third seal, the third seal, scarcity on earth. When he opened the third seal, I heard the living, third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius. Um, and do not harm the oil and the wine. The fourth seal, widespread, widespread death on earth. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And the name of him who sat on it was death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. And then we have the fifth seal. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God, and for the testimony which they held, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then a white robe was given to each, one, each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were, was completed. So these are the martyrs that they're talking about. The, the cry of the martyrs. These are the martyrs that have died in the name of Jesus, proclaiming Jesus up until their last breath. These are the martyrs. And then we have the sixth seal. I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black, black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to earth, as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the king and the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath have, has come and who is able to stand? So that is the end of chapter 6. And I don't know about you, 
I don't want to be here when these seals are open. My prayer is that the rapture happens before the tribulation. But you know what? I don't know that. But why I think that is because it makes sense to me. If we are the bride of Christ, does Jesus want a bride that has been beaten and bruised to be his bride? Or does he want to snatch us out before it gets really bad? My prayer is to be snatched out before it gets really bad. But I trust God with everything that I have. And it's his plan, not mine. But my, that is my prayer. I want to go in the rapture. I want to see what it looks like when Jesus is in the clouds. I want to go then. But it's not my plan and purpose. It's God's. And so I have to trust His plan and purpose and His perfect timing. But I just, I wasn't even planning on reading that, but all of Psalm 9 was about God's judgment. And I just couldn't pass it up. Judgment is coming, brothers and sisters. Not for the saved, but for the unsaved. And so it is time, it is time to get off the fence. It is time to get saved. And I don't know how I want to share it tonight. I think I'm just going to do a very short one. I need to go, I need to go feed my child. It's the ABCs of life. The ABCs of life. I got this at YEC in 2019. Um, I don't know who made this. I guess see you at the poll.com made it. Okay. Because we were doing, that was the deal. We'll see you at the poll. Well, we need to do that. That's coming up next month. Usually comes up in September. Okay. Do you know the ABCs of life? God created you. To experience a full life here on earth, John 10.10. 10. And he wants you to spend eternity with him. He does, everyone. He wants everyone. He wants none to perish. Second uh, Peter 3.9. To become a Christian, you simply need to admit you need a Savior. We've all disobeyed God. We've all sinned. And earned separation from God, which is death. Sin, the uh, wages of sin is death. Romans 3.23 and Romans 6.23. No matter how good you are or how hard you try, you can't work your way into heaven. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. We can't. It's a gift. It's a gift from God through Jesus. Believe in Jesus Christ. Admit, believe. Believe in Jesus Christ, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3, 16. C. Commit. Commit your life to Christ. You can believe in your mind that Jesus exists, but to have a relationship with him, you must ask him to be your Lord. Here on earth and your Savior eternally. Romans 10 9 says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This is a very short prayer. Jesus, I have sinned. Thank you for dying for me so I could be forgiven.
I trust you alone for eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So a very, a very short salvation message, but it's not the length. It's the belief in Jesus Christ. It's asking for forgiveness. It's confessing Him as your Savior. And you don't have to do this, but if you want to grow spiritually closer to God every day, then read His Word. And start in Matthew. Learn about the Savior that you just accepted as yours. Learn about his life. Learn about his ministry. Learn about the things that he wants us to do in our Christianity. And pray. Pray to God every day. Pray to God in praise. Find you some praise music. And lift up the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of God. And lift up the name of the Holy Spirit. All right, it is time to do the blessing, and my friend Josie didn't make it tonight. I hope that she is doing well. In uh, Numbers 6, 24 through 26, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Wow, this world needs peace, but it doesn't need a false peace. It needs a true peace from Jesus. It only comes through Jesus. He is our Prince of Peace. He will give us peace. All right, well, I am going to pray, and I'm going to get off of here so I can go and take care of our son. I hope I have a volume on here. Yeah, I do. Okay, well, let's pray. I just want to pray about salvation. I think I feel very led just to pray. To pray for people that are sick. To pray for people that did get out of Afghanistan. To pray for... Um, I'll think about it as I go. God, we just come to you and we just thank you, God. God, we know that you are the righteous judge. We know that you cannot be bought, you cannot be compromised, and you can't be threatened. God, that is why we need to humbly come to you and through Jesus Christ accept Jesus as our Savior, God. I just thank you that Jesus is my Savior and he is my shepherd because Jesus knows the way back to you. And he is the only one that does. God, I just pray for the lost. I just cry out for the lost, God, that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, God. That you would open their hearts, that you would soften their hearts. That they would be drawn by the Holy Spirit to Jesus. That they would be saved, God. God, I pray that even for all the evil in this world. If there is any way for them to be saved, God, I pray that the Holy Spirit would draw them to Jesus. I know many Muslims have seen dreams and visions of Jesus, and they have been saved, God. I know that you can perform miracles, God, that you can bring these people in if they are meant to be in the fold of Jesus. God, we just pray that you would give us boldness to share your truths, not to back down, just to share your truths, and give us boldness to share the gospel of Jesus with everyone that we see, everyone that we come in contact with, to not care what people think, God, to just um, just abandon what people think and caring what people think about us, God. Just help us to put that in the forefront that it is most important to you. Salvation is most important to you. God, I pray for these people that have come to America from Afghanistan. I pray that you would put things in place, God, and that would give them the help that they need, that they would be attended to, God. 
that they would see the hands and feet of Jesus. And if they are not Christians, I know many are, but if they are not God, that they would be drawn to Jesus and that they would be saved. That they would see the the light of Jesus in the people that tend to them. That they would feel that love and compassion of Jesus. God, I pray for the ones that are stuck there. I just pray for your favor. I pray for your protection, God. I pray that um, for the success of the retired military and the nonprofit organizations that are over there, even though it is past the deadline, God, they will not leave people behind. And I praise you for that. I praise you that these people are determined. They will not turn their back on these people in need. God, what I saw today was horrific. I pray that you would be with that family of those people, that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength, that you would protect them, God. That this isn't going to be an occurrence since our military left daily, God. I just pray for safety. I pray for protection, for your legion of angels to surround these people, for the Taliban to be walking all around them and they just can't see them because your angels are right in front of them, God. God, I know that you are powerful and mighty and magnificent and you still perform miracles. Please help these people to be able to get get where you want them to be, what your plan and purpose is. I really think it would have been better just to go in there and liberate these people from this oppression, liberate these people from what they deal with all the time, the fears that they have, the freedoms that have been stripped away in one day, God. I just pray that you would be with them. God, I know that so many things are going on. I can't even keep up with so many things that are going on, God, but there is nothing that escapes you. And we thank you for that. We thank you for a Savior that loves us, a Savior that will protect us, a Savior that will lead us, a Savior that will provide for us, a Savior that will heal us, a Savior that will redeem us and a Savior that will forgive us because we are human and we are going to fail over and over again, God. But you are patient, God, with us and you love us. That's an an excuse to sin, but when we do stumble in to sin, God, there is forgiveness through Jesus. There is grace through Jesus. There is mercy, and there are blessings. Just pray for Josie, God. I just pray that you would be with her in Austin, that you would continue to help them heal, that you would be with Mike, and that you would continue to help them heal, that you would be with my daughter, that you would alleviate the pain that she has, God, that you would help her to feel better, just stronger and stronger every day, God. Just pray for all these people that are sick. I know many more that have other things too. Just pray for healing, miraculous healing for them. For them to feel your presence in their healing, God. God, we just thank you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise that is due to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my pray and share warriors. That concludes my time with you. I went a little long tonight. I'm going to work on my other camera, which I don't know. It just doesn't look right. I'm I'm thinking that it's the camera on my computer because I got UCAM. I downloaded UCAM, and it's still not great. All right. Well, I hope that you have an awesome rest of your night. And an awesome tomorrow, which is Tuesday. I'm going to go and eat lunch with my best friend from high school tomorrow. I'm a little bit excited. I'm going to reach out to her and see if we are still on. And um, 
going to be fun. It's going to be great. It's going to be good to connect with her again and to get caught up. We get together every once in a while, not often enough, and get caught up. All right. Well, much love. Much love. And cyber hugs. So I'll see you again. Good night.